Environments are hard and they take forever to build, even longer to render. And that's why in this video, we're gonna be looking at five tips on how you can speed up your environmental renders. Some of these techniques will render even twice as fast as before without losing quality. So with that being said, let's dive in and get started. This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Now, the first tip I wanna give is that you should be using images and videos wherever you can in your scene to cheat. For example, here, I have a little forest scene and I have just a couple trees here, but the rest is out of focus. So I don't really need a lot of geometry back here. So what I can actually do is just go ahead and download an image, for example, like the one here from Storyblocks, and I can just plug that into the plane back there. If I plug this in back here, you can see how it fills out the scene and gives a lot of detail and depth without adding anything to the render time. It also is much quicker to build out environments this way. I actually did this for my ocean scene where I took these fish particles here, rendered out a video version, and then put them in my scene to speed up render times for the final result. This is actually a really effective way to add things like dust to your scene or even easily to mix in fog without having to deal with long volumetric render times. I do this all the time. In fact, this scene here is almost entirely 2D images. You can see here that I've rendered the hills as a 2D image back here. And I've also rendered the clouds and the sky all as 2D images. Now, when I put it together, I only need to render this foreground elements, meaning that the scene will render much faster overall. There's actually something you can do to improve this technique even more. Let's take a look here at the clouds in the background. I have these cotton ball looking clouds, which would take forever to render with a particle system. So I rendered those as 2D images. However, I wanted to use those in all of my scenes and have them still react to lighting. So let's zoom in on this image here. You can see here how it's still reacting to the lighting. And that's because this 2D image actually has a normal map. And we can create this very simply from any of our objects. Let me show you how. Let's take a look at a real example here. I have a stylized 3D tree here. And what I'd like to do is create a 2D version to use in the background on some of my scenes. So here you can see I have the tree set up. Here I have a simple orthographic camera so that it is flat with no perspective. And then the only lighting I have is a little bit of gray light in the world just to give us some flat lighting. I'm going to render this here and make sure you have transparency turned on. And then I'm going to save this as my base color. And then now what I'm going to do is come over here to the render properties. We're gonna change the render engine from cycles to workbench. Then what we're going to do is under lighting, we're gonna change from studio to matte cap. We're gonna click the matte cap here and turn on the normals. This is going to give us a normal view. So I will hit F12 to render again there, and I'm going to save this as my normal map. Now I'm going to import those as a image mesh plane, and I'm going to import my base color first here, and I'm just going to scale this up and place it next to our tree. Then I'm just going to import my normal map, set the color space to non-color, plug that into my normal map color, and plug that into the normal. I'm just gonna turn the roughness up a bit here and add a light to the scene. Let's add a color to make it a little more obvious. And you can see here, how this is still lighting our 2D image and our 3D object. And when it's far away, you can't even really tell the difference. This is an amazing way to save tons of time on your renders. This is the perfect segue to talk about our video sponsor, Storyblocks, which gives you unlimited downloads of high quality stock video, textures, music, sound effects, and more, all for one predictable subscription cost. It also has an easy licensing system so that you can use these in your projects without worry. It's perfect for filling in these background details to bring a render to life with these images and videos, and it can help save drastically on render times. You could use this type of footage to fill out skies, texture buildings, or build plant models. But what I find it super useful for is using it to speed up visual effects rendering. For example here, I'm using stock footage to add steam to this coffee cup animation, which renders instantly, instead of setting up a slow volumetric sim. Now their library is created by real artists, so everything feels authentic and blends naturally into 3D scenes. And because it's unlimited, I can test and experiment freely without worrying about extra cost, which honestly just makes the whole creative process a lot more fun. Now, if you check out the link below and in the description, you can get two extra months for free when you sign up for an annual plan. So check that out now and let's get back to the video. Let's take a moment to talk about LODs. I actually saw this used at the Beacon in one of the Blender talks this year, and it was really exciting to see how the production company used it. Up front, all the trees are high resolution asset, and in the background, all the trees are 2D assets. They do this by detecting the distance from the camera. Everything far enough away from the camera deemed to not be visible is converted to a 2D version of that asset. So take a look at this geometry node setup here. This is a really simple setup that measures the distance of the camera 
and plugs this into a switch. Here we have two instance collections, one with our low poly assets and one with our high poly assets. And you can see here that as I move the camera around the scene, how it is altering the objects based on the distance from the camera. Feel free to copy this setup. You can actually adjust the distance from the camera and this little node right here. Let's talk a bit about camera calling. Here you can see I have a camera where only the objects in front of the camera are being rendered. If I go ahead and move my camera back and forth here, you can see how the objects are spawning and despawning in and out of view. As you can imagine, this drastically can improve your render times. Now there's two ways to do this. We can do it with geometry nodes, or we can do it in cycles. Let's look at the cycles way first. Now with the cycles way, it's important to note that you won't be able to see this in object view. I have to switch to render mode and you can see here how objects are disappearing once they fall out of the camera view. So here I am in a large swamp scene that I've created with lots of trees, rocks, hills, and more. If I come up here to the render properties tab, scroll down to simplify, I can check this on. Then if I twirl down culling here, I can turn on camera culling here. And you see that nothing happens. And that's because these objects have to be told how to communicate with cycles. So what I'm gonna do is grab a rock, for example, right here outside of the camera. And I'm going to come down here to the object properties tab, I'm going to turn down the visibility. And then under culling, I'm going to turn on use camera call. Now, if I were to take this camera here and rotate this a bit, we would see that that rock disappears. Now it would take forever to do that on every object in our scene. But if we grab all of our objects at once, so I'm just gonna grab my object collection up here, then what I can do is just twirl down to the calling and I wanna enable this for all the objects. So rather than just click it on, it will only turn it on for the active object. But if I hold Alt, Enter while hovering over it, and you can see how immediately that just cleared out my whole scene. So let's come back here to the simplify settings and look at what we can do here too. Now, one problem to consider is that if your camera is moving in your scene and you're actively deleting objects, shadows might pop in and out of your screen if they're close to the camera. So one thing you can do is actually turn this number up. So if I turn this up to something like 0.1, you can see how we'll actually render a little bit further outside of the camera. So adjust these settings based on the needs of your scene. But let's take a look at how we can do this in geometry nodes as well. Now this four scene is one of the densest scenes I have ever made. You can see here that I have leaves all along the ground, bushes, trees, roots, and more. And unfortunately, because this geometry node system is a bit complex, it doesn't work with the cycles culling. And that's why sometimes it's advantageous to do camera culling within geometry nodes itself. So if I go ahead and plug this in here, you can actually see how it's deleted all of the geometry that is not visible by the camera. And I have my little node set up here, and all I'm doing is plugging this into the selection of the instances on points. So if I were to take that off, you would see how some of those trees begin to repopulate back in. This is just telling geometry nodes that any instances that the camera sees are the only ones that are visible. Let's take a look at this node setup. So I'm just going to zoom in here so that you can pause and copy this node setup if you want. Essentially what's happening is we're taking the active camera here, finding some vector coordinates, attaching a plane in front of the camera, and using a raycast to hit that plane. Anything that hits that plane is then visible and filtered out through this Boolean math setup we have. Now I actually found this fantastic node setup from a great tutorial from Polycount. And he goes through all of the deep vector math and everything behind the process. So I will link to his tutorial in the description below. There's no doubt that fog can add a lot of depth to your scene. You can see here in this scene that I have a general cloudy fog and also these light ray fogs that when put together, give this forest a more lifelike look with more depth of field, as you can see here in the final render. But the problem with these volumetric setups is that they take forever to render. So I'm going to show you how we can create a much faster rendering fog. So here I have a camera with a cube and over here I have a render view. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our camera here, going to hit Shift S and bring our cursor to selected. We're going to hit Shift A and we're going to add a plane. Now we're going to hit R90X. That'll rotate that 90 degrees on the X axis. Now what we're going to do is hit Control A and we're going to apply that rotation. That'll just zero out the rotation up here. Now I'm going to move this forward on the Y axis so that it sits in front of the camera. Now I'm going to rename this plane up here, Simple Fog. And I'm going to grab this plane, grab the camera there and hit Control P and we're going to parent and keep that. Now when we look around with our camera here, it will stay attached to our camera. I'm gonna grab that plane. I'm gonna tab into edit mode there 
and I'm going to scale this up to something large. So I'm actually just going to hit S and type in 100. And that's just going to give us a ginormous plane, as you see here. Now I'm just going to tab back out on object mode and zoom out here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab that plane in object mode here, come over to the modifier and add an array. Now we want to make that array go here in the Y axis. I'm actually going to turn off relative offset, turn on constant offset, zero out the X, which is the default. And then we can just crank up the Y axis here. And we're going to want to move in the positive direction. And then what I'm going to do is just increase the value of the Y here. So I'm going to start with maybe 10 meters and I'm going to turn the count up. So now what we have are a bunch of planes that are attached to our camera, just like this. So we'll grab the plane here and we're going to turn this into a simple fog. So I'm going to add a new material here, type in simple fog, and then we're going to just turn down the alpha to something really small, like 0 0.05. And you can see here how now we're starting to get a foggy fall off on our cube. If I turn this alpha up, you can see how it's starting to darken and give us a kind of semi fog look. Now we don't want this to cause any artifacts with weird intersections in our objects. So what we're actually going to do is with the plane selected, come to our object data tab, come down here to the visibility, and we're gonna turn this off to everything except for the camera. Here's that same four scene, but instead of using a volumetric fog, we're using my simple fog setup. And you can see how we have these planes moving here throughout the entire scene. If I'm to grab that simple fog there, we can actually make adjustments to further change the look. So in this case, I currently have it set to more of a blue fog, but if I wanted to set this to something more like a warm fog, I can also up the thickness of the fog by just turning up the alpha. And a cool way to add even more realism is you can plug a noise texture into a color ramp into the alpha of your simple fog material, and then you can use this to break up the fog. You can see here how I'm using the white values here to control the thickness of the fog. If I look at just my noise texture here, you can see how that's breaking up the fog visually, giving us a much more realistic result. Furthermore, this is a perfect opportunity to use stock footage for something like light rays, which you can then spread out through video footage in various parts of the forest or your scene and get dust particles, light rays, and more without the long render times of a volumetric render. Now, one thing a lot of environments need is plants and they can take forever to render. So let's look at how we can fix that. Let's take a look at the plants in this scene here and how well optimized they are. This is from the Mossify pack. And I can see here that if I look at the topology, that it's one simple curve and a very simple plane. Let's look at how we can do this ourselves. So first thing you're gonna need is a plant texture on an alpha background. Now you can either download one, for example, like the ones I have here on Storyblocks. You can even draw your own texture if you like. Here I drew this leaf and used it as an ivy system in my castle scene here. Now in your scene, you're gonna hit Shift A and you're gonna come down here and add an image you're going to use a mesh plane. It's going to open a dialog box here and you're just going to select your image. So I'm going to select mine right here. And if I switch in the top view mode here and tab in a render view, we can see here that my plant has already been incorporated into our scene, but we wanna add a tiny bit of depth. So I'm going to tab into edit mode here and I'm just going to grab everything, right click, subdivide, and I'm just going to turn this up a few times just like that. Now what I can do is turn on proportional editing up here, grab a few of these, and begin just kind of moving the plant around. In particular, I'm gonna to wanna to grab some of these edge pieces down here and make it look like it's kind of folding over. Now what I wanna do is just bring the origin point down here to the bottom. So I'm gonna grab everything, move that there, tab back out into object mode, and now I have a plant object that I can place around in my scene. Now what we can do is we can drag this over, we can look at our shader menu here, and I'm going to drag this image, bring it out, and we're just gonna plug this color here into the roughness. Now it's not gonna do much at first, but if we add a color ramp here, what I'm gonna do here is just take a look at the color ramp, and I'm gonna bring this up. I want this plant to be mostly a roughness value. You can see how we're getting a little bit of reflections there. And then we can actually take this, drag this off into a bump map, We'll put this down into the height, plug that into our normal, and you can see how now we have a pretty simple little plant texture. Now, if you check out this moss blanket I put here on the bed, I actually made this with the asset pack Mossify, but if I zoom in here, you can actually see it's using the same technique. These are all just little 2D images plugged into a geometry node system, and because of that, look how quickly it's rendering even though it's a very dense moss vegetation. 